Could you tell us uh, a little bit about um, your experiences with uh, inventory and production control uh, at Arthur D. Little? Excuse me? Could, Could you tell us a little bit more about your experience? I know you developed uh, a specialty in it, which was a source of the Harvard Business Review article on inventory and uh, production control. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you then uh, subsequently wrote a book on it. Uh, so could you tell us uh, how that came to be a specialty? Was that something for which there was a particular need in industry? Well, <clears throat> um, I guess it was by chance. Uh, we had been working on the Sears project for some time, and <clears throat> um, we had an invitation to um, do some work at Johnson & Johnson on their baby products plant. Uh, the question was, it was a plant. It had five automated lines uh, with a fixed capacity at each, a, a staff that could manage some combination of these lines, um, a very seasonal demand for their products, very uh, peak demand in the summertime, just at the time when, the, by tradition, J&J &J closed down for two weeks. And the question was, how the dickens do you manage inventory so that you can get through this period? Um, my job in the assignment was to go down and look, try to get all the data I could on just what the capacities were, uh, how what products interacted, uh, how what the staff could do, what the costs and marginal costs of the different products were. George Kimball <clears throat> was consulting at, at, uh, with us, he was at, still at Columbia, would visit uh, once a week or so, and uh, we'd talk about the information I had, and he'd uh, kind of speculate on how we might organize it. One time he came and he said he thought he had an, an approach. And um, he explained to me uh, this concept. And he, he used the example of, of um, optimizing uh, the contents of a can of mixed nuts. And uh, what he was talking about, of course, was linear programming. But it was before Danzig's book and it was <clears throat> When I wanted to know more about the subject, he said he referred me to Herman Weil's monograph in the Princeton Mathematical Series. And uh, that was kind of a heavy dose to learn about linear programming. But <clears throat> we ended up setting up a system that was basically um, an application of a very simple transportation model that um, optimized the way in which you would think of inventory really as, as uh, an accumulated investment in product. Uh, and the question was to minimize the investment while meeting the, the, uh, the goal of having the production available. So um, this transportation model uh, was one we could use to decide just what products to make it at what time and which ones to build and which ones to postpone. And uh, it was our first look at the issues of production control and inventory control. And it brought out very clearly that inventory was an investment uh, and a productive one, if productively managed. The, uh, it wasn't too long after that that um, we, um, we, we got active with the, the, the um, light division of General Electric in Cleveland. Um, I think the, um, the group at, at uh, um, Case was also involved with them, Russ Acoff and... Um, and uh, Churchman? Who? Um, West Church Churchman. West Churchman, yeah. But our, our job was to uh, see if we could help them manage their field inventories. Um, light bulbs, were there, at that time, I don't know how they're sold now, but they were put out on consignment. And um, the, <clears throat> the retailer basically paid GE when they sold the bulbs. 
And so it was a pretty heavy investment for GE. And um, we worked on how to improve and manage that issue. So the idea of, 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 of investment in a field operation um, through inventory management uh, kind of came to the surface. <clears throat> then at, at a similar, around the same time, we had an assignment with uh, uh, a company that made threads of various sorts. And this was really almost, a, looked like a job shop. Uh, and we had to work out a, a method for scheduling the work. Uh, incidentally, one of the things we did discover in the course of our work on inventory control over the years was that so-called job shops really were, in most cases, really weren't job shops. They had a product flow. And if you manage them as a product flow process, you could get much better effects than if you thought of them as a job shop where orders would move around and one by one. But anyway, we got some experience in how you fed that kind of a system. And um, sort of looking at these, putting these together, um, kind of an idea emerged of a coherent view of how to manage inventories and how to use production management to do that, production control. And um, over the course of time, we did quite a bit of work in that field. And another member of our group, Bob Brown, uh, became almost a specialist in, in uh, inventory control work. So I know you started in R30 a little at a time when uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, formalized baggage, I guess you might say, surrounding the subject of operations research. It became increasingly mathematically oriented with time. Of course, you've had use for some of those tools, such as linear programming, but you've said in other places that uh, you felt in some ways divorced from where OR was going academically. Academically, we and and um, I I'm not sure that I understand why, but <clears throat> we were uh, uh, we were focused on f gathering facts. We were focused on experimentation. Uh, we were focused on seeing what was happening and learning as much as we could, either through observation or experimentation and drawing conclusions from the data so that um, we didn't think of ourselves as being um, model makers or being uh, tied up with uh, technology, or uh, that's not a very good word, but tied up with, with mathematical method. We did <coughs> occasionally draw out of the data, we, we were able to produce a model that would be helpful. Jerry Hunter was uh, working with me on the Sears case, and we were able to <clears throat> carry Gil King's work to the point of, of showing that the Sears population was made up of, um, of people who individually acted, um, uh, ordered according to a Poisson distribution, and with means that were distributed exponentially in the population. We wrote a paper, incidentally, on this subject, and it was first turned down by the editors of the journal on the grounds that it was too pragmatic. And incidentally, later, when I had written a series on inventory control, the editor of the journal wanted to know why I hadn't published it in the journal instead of the business review. But there you are. Anyway, um, uh, I forgot the question. Well, let's um, take a specific example. So at the same time as you were developing an expertise in uh, inventory and production control, there was a, a theoretical literature that was growing around uh, just those subjects. Did you have much use uh, for what was published uh, no. in those areas? No. <laughs> Simple as that. No. It, uh, um, the, the, um, I can remember some of the, the assignments in that area that I worked on. And, <clears throat> uh, you know, we had to develop uh, management processes that were simple uh, that the people in the client organizations could use. And uh, 
so uh, we didn't have much need for, for a very elaborate technology. Incidentally, we were, along with doing a lot of work in logistics, uh, which included not only inventory control and production control, but uh, plant allocation issues and locational issues and such. We were also doing a good deal of work on marketing. Uh, we were quite active in um, uh, information technology and the implementation of new information systems. So, and, uh, so we weren't strictly a logistics group. When you speak about information technology, was that, do you mean it in kind of the older sense of uh, handling uh, records and that sort of thing, or do you mean it in the generic sense of just implementing computers or any sort of uh, uh, digital technology? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I think once upon a time, uh, well, nowadays, of course, IT means just about anything having to do with uh, computers, the internet, and so mm -hmm. forth. It's my understanding that in the 1970s and the 1960s, information technology referred to um, a more specific set of uh, uh, uses oriented around retrieving information, uh, cataloging it, uh, that sort of thing. Well, I'm not sure I know how to respond to that. <clears throat> we were, um, one aspect of our work in information technology was the uh, advising uh, client companies on um, the type of uh, installation that they should make and operate for their business purposes. Uh, we were also doing some quite sophisticated um, system development for a variety of uh, things. Uh, one, one was sort of far, re uh, far reach from operations research, but developing um, um, a, a system for analyzing pipe stress and the, and the movement of pipes in a piping system under high different temperatures. Um, we did other related work. For example, in the, in the Sears case, um, or in our work for Sears, one interesting issue that Sears faced was when an order came in, determining whether it was from an existing customer or a new customer. Um, it could be the same name, but it might be a slightly different address. So it might be a, a, a parent and child, or it might be two different names, but at the same address. Um, and there were a lot of little twists like that. And it was important for Sears to keep their records clean. Um, they, wanted, I mean, they wanted to get a customer's whole record together. At the, on the other extreme, they didn't want to apparently merged two customers that were really different. And so we developed uh, um, a, 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 by then their, their customer records were on computers and we developed a technology for um, them to use to analyze a, a record and determine whether it was a fresh one or a existing customer. So we got into all kinds of different aspects of the, uh, the, 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 the American Airlines case that I mentioned was another example of uh, getting involved in a large information system. So Arthur D. Little was, of course, the first uh, consulting firm into the OR field. Are you able to tell us anything about uh, how OR got along in the consulting field in general? Um, were other firms interested in it? Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> well, SRI uh, on the West Coast, SRI was a, uh, had um, many features similar to Arthur D. Little. In fact, there was one point of view that SRI was formed to provide West Coast industry the kind of services that Little was performing more broadly. Uh, they, they had an activity. Um, um, there was a, um, but among the, among the traditional management 
consulting firms like Booz or McKinsey, I don't think they were particularly involved. I was <clears throat> once recruited by a senior officer, a senior partner at McKinsey, um, to join the firm. And uh, in the process, I met Marvin Bauer, who was the, the famous organized founder of the firm. And uh, he was quite skeptical of operations research and what I, as a young squirt, could contribute to clients. And, and I remember mentioning to him that, well, I was doing some work in production control. And he said, we know so much more about production control than you do. Why would anybody want to hire you? And uh, I thought afterwards, you know, if I were quicker on the draw, I would have commented to him that they may know more now, but we're learning faster. When was this about? Oh, I don't know, my early 50s. Okay. Um, so I, 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 don't, I don't have any recollection particularly of, of uh, the other, the major consulting firms. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the appetite for operations research uh, in industry? You mentioned that after you published your Harvard Business Review article, there were a lot of people who came knocking. Uh, what about the reputation of operations research in general over time? I really don't know. No? No. Um, I, you know, I, I was looking out and really, uh, so I really don't have any good point of view on that. Um, we were happy. Right. 